So I'm super excited to talk to you about how to automate your reporting today. This is going to be a lot of basic stuff um, within the headset platform. So if you're new to it, uh, it'll be a lot of nice tips and tricks to know as you're navigating throughout the system. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat as we go along and I can answer them along the way. Otherwise, I will give a chance to unmute the participants at the end of this so we can talk a little bit more informally about any questions that you have. One other thing to note is that I'm going to be going over our fake retailer store um, in headset. So it's not going to be anyone's real data. It's just going to be our dummy data. All right, so we're going to jump into things. So when talking about automating your reports, what we're really talking about is how to schedule a dashboard as an email. So any of the dashboards seen in the headset platform can be scheduled as an email, but there are some in particular that we think are good to point out that would serve well for email purposes. There's a couple that are meant specifically to be emailed to you and your team um, so that you can kind of set it and forget it and automate a little bit, a bit of this information that's being sent to you. So the first dashboard I'm going to talk about is um, what's called our executive weekly summary. So this is hidden a little bit behind the scenes. You can't actually navigate to it within the sidebar over here, but it would be technically found in our overview section. So um, I should mention that if you want to follow along on your own system, you are more than welcome to um, go ahead and get logged in and um, just let me know if you have any questions on where exactly we're at along the way. So within the overview, you can click on the word overview here and scroll all the way down. And you can find the executive weekly summary here. So what we're going to do is click into view dashboard and you'll be taken to the executive weekly summary dashboard. I already have it open here, so I'm going to just go through a couple of the data points that you'll be seeing and why it's good to consider setting this up as a email that's sent to you and your team. So within the executive weekly summary, we have total revenue, total cost, discounts, gross margin, all that good stuff. Um, and it's within it's over the past complete week. So you might be familiar with our daily retailer summaries for each of your stores. Um, this will give you a weekly summary. So it's good for that executive level contact. If that person doesn't need to be inundated with every single day emails, you can just set this up as a weekly kind of reminder or uh, to help them get a pulse on how your business is doing. So the executive weekly summary, as we scroll down, I'm only looking at one of our dummy locations but you can look at all of the locations combined or just one, whatever works best for you. We have our sales overview here. So how we did in terms of total revenue and profit, as well as what did that mean in terms of gross margin? We have some sales uh, last week, transactions and average basket. So we can see how we did in terms of growth. So it looks like this past week wasn't great for us, but that's okay. I'm sure we will uh, do better next time. And then as we scroll down, we can also see um, this week's store sales, transactions and average basket in kind of a bar chart format. Down at the very bottom, you'll see the top products list. So this again is going to look pretty familiar if you are familiar with our daily summary emails, but we're doing it, of course, across the week instead of the day, <clears throat> as well as an hour performance. So I love this heat map. It really gives a good idea of or gives you a good sense of how you're doing in terms of transactions when the hottest time is at your store, indicated by this um, light a yellow rectangle, as opposed to less frequented times like Mondays are always kind of slow. Um, so that will give you a sense of how your week was in terms of transaction count. All right, so let's get into why we're actually here today and how to automate this report. So keep in mind that automation can be done throughout any of the dashboards that you're looking at within Headset. Um, it's going to be done the exact same way. So keep this in mind when you're wanting to schedule other emails as well. 
Over here at the top right, you'll see the three dashboard actions or the three dots for dashboard actions, and you can click schedule delivery. So I have a couple of schedules already for this executive weekly summary, but I'm gonna create a new one here. So a couple of settings that you can look into when scheduling an email for any of the dashboards is the recurrence. So I want this to be sent weekly to maybe the owner of my store and I want him to know or her to know uh, what's really going on. So I'm gonna set it as weekly. I want them to receive it on a Monday morning at 6 a.m. So it's ready to go right when he gets in. Um, and so he'll, he can take a look at it. It'll be in his inbox. Destination is going to be set to email and then email address. So you'll want to add their email addresses, whoever you want to receive this information, you can add it here. And then format, what I typically prefer actually is the PNG visualization. It will come across in an email just as a picture, basically, but um, it kind of resonates a little bit better or the resolution is a little bit better, but you can do PDF if you want it to be downloadable. CSV zip file is really only applicable for table type formats. Um, so we're not going to choose that one, but either PDF or PNG. And of course, you can test this as well. So if I go ahead and click test now, it's going to send um, the email to my inbox and I can view what it looks like in real time before actually saving it and setting it as a scheduled email. Um, you can also change the subject line. So I suggest doing this. Otherwise, it's just going to default to whatever we have. Um, and you can do like weekly summary for Denver. And I know that that's our weekly summary for the Denver location. All right. And then the filters are going to carry across from whatever you chose on the actual dashboard, but you can change it um, here as well, or you can schedule multiple emails for different locations if you're doing it that way. And then advanced options, these are important too. I recommend adding a custom message so that so they don't just put it into a spam inbox, um, but you can say, check out our Denver local stats from last week, uh, something like that. I don't know, maybe that's too, too much excitement for uh, the owner of a store, but um, I think it's pretty exciting. So with the custom message, again, recommend that, and then you can include links or arrange the dashboard in a single column. I don't actually know what that looks like, but it would probably be a pretty lengthy email if you did it that way. Delivery time zone, also important. So it's gonna default to Los Angeles, but if I were sending it to myself, I would choose Chicago for central time zone. Um, but I recommend changing this to whatever time zone you're in or makes the most sense. Once you have all of your settings selected, you can go ahead and click save and it will be added to your schedules. So again, I have been testing the same exact one for a couple of days now, but um, you get the gist. So if there is another scheduled email, for example, maybe it's for a different location, such as a Washington location or something like that, it will appear within the schedules for this specific dashboard. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and click done and it will be set and you can forget about it. And this will be information that recurs to um, the owner or whoever you decided to send it to. With all of that, you might think, okay, this uh, weekly summary has been going out for a couple of months now. It's not actually doing any good. It's probably getting pretty annoying. You can always adjust that schedule. Um, you can click on the three lines over here at the top left and scroll down to manage and click scheduled emails here. So this is going to allow you to have full control over any scheduled email that you have, whether it be in this weekly summary, dashboard or anywhere else. So you can just go right here and see who exactly is getting the emails and what the emails are. Within this, you can click up at the top left of any of these widgets to edit that information from the email, or you can delete it here by clicking the X 
um, it's going to say you sure you want to delete and you can click apply and you can delete it. It is pretty simple and straightforward. Just remember you can manage those emails down here at the bottom left uh, side of your of your panel. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'm going to take a quick sip of water and we will learn how to favorite some dashboards next. Excellent, all right. So let's say that we again want to go back to that executive weekly summary. And because it's kind of a hidden dashboard, we want to say, OK, let's make this easier to navigate to. Again, you can do this with any one of the dashboards that you see. Um, it just makes it a lot more convenient to favorite dashboards that you go to frequently, just like it's convenient to favorite any website that you go to frequently, and it will be added to your bookmarks bar. So up at the top right is our favorite icon. You can click favorite here. The name is executive weekly summary or whatever the dashboard is called. You can change this, of course, and you can also share it. So if you want it to just be for yourself and it's something that you go to frequently, but not everybody else wants to, um, keep it un unshared. And then if you do want to share it with the rest of your team, so any user that is a headset user can log in and see for your store. Um, you can share it with all of them and they'll have access to the same information. Whatever filters that you preset before you favorite, that is going to be the dashboard that they will see when they click on it. So if I click apply here, this is now added to my favorited bar. And where your favorited bar is, is also at the bottom here. So if we click on the three lines, we can scroll down and see under manage again, manage favorites. So within Manage Favorites, we can see all of the dashboards that have been favorited, whether they've been shared with me or I have shared them or I've just kept them to myself. Down here, it's going to say shared by. If someone else has shared it with you, you'll see nothing if it's just something that you've favorited by yourself and hasn't sh haven't shared it with anyone, or it's going to be shared by you, which is if you have shared the dashboard. Again, there's always a way to edit these dashboards too. So if you click in the top right three dots, you can unshare, you can delete, you can go to view, or you could schedule this again as an email. Lots of different options there with your favorite dashboards. Again, that's going to be found in the bottom left under manage. All right. So that is how to schedule emails as well as how to manage favorites. And where I want to go from here is a couple of different, I want to show you a couple of different dashboards that have been designed specifically to be emailed out. Um, really setting and forgetting and helping you to automate your analysis process within your organization or business. So next thing I want to head to is this emails dashboard. So again, specifically made for email purposes. I'm going to talk about the sales as well as the inventory email. I have this pulled up already. And so for the sales email specifically, um, this is going to be helpful. It's going to kind of show you a little bit of similar information that the daily summary email does, as well as that executive weekly summary that I just showed. But you can kind of um, filter it a little bit more to be specifically the criteria that you want to look at. So for an example, let's say I want to look at a weekly email that shows me top metrics from year to date to last year to date. For this analysis, we're going to set the filters as such. So the comparison period is going to be year to date versus last year to date. Um, but you have all of these other options as well. Summarize by store, that's pretty standard. And then the sold date. So what historical data are we looking at? The sold date is going to be in the last six months here. And then we're going to look at it broken out by month. If we do anything less, it might get a little crazy because we're looking at the last year to date. 
but um, you have all these options as well. And I'm gonna also look at any of my stores. I'm not gonna narrow this down any, cause I wanna see how my stores are doing year over year compared to um, for the, the sold date that I have in mind. So with this, once all of your criteria is selected, you can see top level metrics and how they've changed from last year to this year or the last um, full year. I see that everything is pretty much down from the year prior, except for my items per basket. Good to know there. And then if, as I scroll down, I can quickly see at a glance, okay, it looks like there's a couple of stores within my my business that have kind of started going downhill pretty quickly for some reason. Um, maybe I've closed those stores or they're um, just a really slow area. I don't know. Maybe we can do further analysis on that. But if I hover over this, I see my Emerald Valley Vancouver location as well as my Denver location are doing OK. Um, but it looks like the, the other ones aren't doing so great. So the Bothell location as well as the Belltown location. Um, that's just at really quick glance. Of course, you can do further analysis within the rest of our uh, platform, but this is really just supposed to be kind of like a high level uh, at a glance analysis on how you're doing. As I scroll down, I can also view basket performance. So there's a clear outlier here at my Denver location with two and a half units per basket on average. Um, costing about 38 bucks and a basket count of um, over 2,200 or 22,000, sorry. Hourly sales difference, just super high level in terms of what that means for your growth, how that has changed over the last year to date. And then through time, um, just a a nice visualization on your revenue units as well as baskets. You can see if there is a clear outlier for your stores, how are they performing through time? And um, if there's anything that we can kind of quickly identify in terms of either something that's going really well or something that is not going so well. So again, this is meant to be emailed um, with that schedule email functionality and you can schedule the delivery. With this one, I recommend doing that PNG format uh, because it's just gonna um, kind of visually look better within the email. It's going to capture all of these visuals. Um, sometimes the PDF version clips some of them out for some reason. So recommend the PNG if you are looking to set this as maybe like a weekly or monthly type of um, email for you. The next email that I recommend taking a look at is the inventory email. So if you are familiar with our reorder report within our inventory management, um, this will look a little bit familiar. If you're not, I highly recommend um, attending one of the inventory management training sessions that we have available to get you more familiar with our inventory process at Headset and how we analyze that. Um, including best practices and how to read the reorder report. But the inventory email, so let's say, for example, I want to see brands I only have between five and 10 more days of inventory remaining for uh, based on the last 30 days of sale. So what we can do is, again, enter the store information. Let's say I'm just ordering for my Denver store. So I can add that as my store. And optional category filter, you could maybe filter out any non-cannabis related items here. That's typically what we see customers do. You can narrow in on a brand if you want to as well or vendor. The brand field choice has a couple of different options such as looking at the brand, vendor, or product name. Right now we're gonna look at the brand, but I can also show you what that looks like for product as well. And then estimated days remaining. So this is a really cool feature. We can select is between five and 10 days. You could also use a greater than, less than operator, whatever makes most sense to you. But let's say I wanna know because I want to make sure that we have um, more than 10 days remaining 
of inventory at all time. I could maybe set this for is um, less than 10 days and make sure that I am sending this on a weekly basis to myself and my inventory managers so that they're well aware of what products are selling quickly, which ones need to be reordered in a timely manner, and which ones could maybe wait a little bit. So that's why I chose in the range of five to 10 days. And then we're looking at the last 30 days of historical sales to determine on average how quickly do these sell and what we have in stock right now. So with all of that information, we are brought to this table here. Um, so we have our brands on the left of ones that we are have less than 10 days or between five and 10 days remaining. The estimated days remaining is going to be here in the middle. And then total quantity, this is how much product we have on hand right now. And then average daily units sold. So on average, how many units per day of this brand do we sell? So it looks like Dabstract, we have the highest amount remaining of this product and a pretty high quantity, but we're selling more average units than the rest of these products here. So maybe we wanna take a, um, a closer look at the Dabstract brand and narrow it down by which products we can reorder for them. Same with full spec. It looks like we have um, quite a few units are selling of this brand as well. So maybe we wanna take a look at that too. If this is something we wanna take a look at, we can um, use the brand filter here. So let's say I want to look at Dabstract as well as full spec. Cool, so this is gonna be an OR operator. It's gonna be Dabstract or full spec. And then we want to look at it by product name. So let's refresh this here. It brings in three different products and I can see a little bit more information about these. So we have the full spec cherry pie cartridge. We have about seven days remaining of that. We have four on hand and we're selling about less than one per day. Um, and then same with this other cartridge and um, golden lemons, whatever that is. I don't know the category of this, but by Dabstract, we're selling less than one per day of both of these as well. But this just gives you a little bit deeper dive into um, the specific brand and products that make up that brand that we're telling you to maybe consider reordering. Um, now, maybe you're looking at this and saying average unit sold less than one per day. That's not really a fast mover. That's not really bringing in a lot of margin. Um, you don't have to reorder that. That's totally fine. But um, it's just kind of going into a deeper analysis of this product mix to make sure that you're really making smart decisions on what you're actually reordering. Again, you can set this as an email using that scheduled delivery feature. All right, I'll let you add any uh, questions to the chat. I'm gonna take another sip of water and then we're gonna wrap things up pretty quickly here. Okay, see nothing in the chat. So the last couple of items I want to go through are just user settings in general. So you might want to not receive that daily email summary. I know some of our, our customers are just kind of inundated if they do have multiple locations. You can always adjust your settings and then schedule maybe any of the other dashboards that we went through on a more reasonable cadence so you're not completely infiltrated with those emails. So going to your initials at the bottom left here, we can click on settings and then manage email. So it's gonna be under profile over here on the left for manage email. That daily retailer summary is gonna be right here in the middle and you can simply uncheck this box to remove yourself from that list. Um, one thing I will note is that each individual user does have to go in and do this. So you, if you ever have any other of your other users asking, hey, I need to be taken off of this daily retailer summary, how do I do that? They'll have to go into their settings like I just showed you and do it themselves. 
Another really cool thing we have within the application is our industry reports. So you might get our newsletter that announces when we have new industry reports, but you can also find them directly in app here within this industry reports icon on the left. Um, we just published Exploring Cannabis Co Consumer Trends and Demographics in 2021. Um, that's kind of a, a mouthful to read, uh, but it's super interesting. It looks at who is really buying these products, what's the next generation that we need to look out for, what generation is growing quickly, um, and all that good stuff. I just read it. It's, it was a pretty interesting read. And then the last thing that I wanted to point out that not many people know about, but could, could be really useful within the industry is our blog. Um, so that can be found um, within our website under resources and blog. We have tons of different resources, um, such as podcasts, blogs, all that good stuff. Um, and we just came out with our cannabis market overview as well. So. Uh, take a look at that if that is of interest to you, see what markets are growing, um, what the upcoming markets are. So that is all I have for you today. Um, feel free to chat in any more questions or I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to unmute as well. Otherwise, um, feel free to check out our Headset Hangouts page for additional and upcoming sessions, send the rest of your team to them. Um, and just email me as well if you have any more questions or chat into the chat bubble on the, um, on the headset retail page. I will stay on for just a few more minutes in case you want to ask any questions.